Right, welcome back to the channel everyone and Suze is going to make a brief guest appearance showing off her new jumper. You're not in, you're not in focus there, remember? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. just a blurry. Hello, yeah. I'm wearing my ridiculous shoes. So. Um, so we do have a topic for today's video, but first... First, I, let's celebrate that Sean's back from the US. Yeah, that is a good thing to celebrate. A massive, massive trip. It was a huge trip, yeah. To get back and yeah. to get there and back. Just a bit of a thanks to Nigel. Um, and also Bob, because Nigel put a, a big list of places we should go and see in the area with pictures yeah. and everything. Amazing. So that was really good. And Bob has also sent me a detailed email about some ideas for the channel, suggested that I should do a, a, a kind of a poll of the audience to see what kind of content they want to have going forward. So both, both really good ideas and thank you for supporting, um, really, guys. Um, the other thing is, I think people should go and watch Two Wheeled Willie's uh, channel because he's unfortunately dropped his Bonneville. I know. I know. He's never done it before in his life. So if you do feel like uh, going and giving him some support, I I'm sure he would appreciate it. Definitely. It's, it's a good channel. He's just a really, really funny guy. But seeing as he's just dropped the Bonneville. Yeah, um, we're sending lots of love to you. Yeah, we know how that feels, Willie. Willie. It's absolutely awful. Um, and the other person I wanted to mention is Darcy from Mr. Darcy and the Old Man because he's he obviously it's a father and son duo but Darcy who's the son he must be in his early 20s and he's just gone to Spain to do the Triumph 400 pro uh, product launch the bike launch so I thought credit where credit's due I mean it must be quite intimidating going all the way over there with all of the other reviewers and and he's gone there and he's done a great review Exciting. video that's amazing it's in Val Val Valencia which yeah. is just down the coast from Beautiful. us. So yeah, props to him. He did a great review and you know, going to a product launch, I just think it's quite a intimidating thing if you're a young guy. So yeah. he's done really well. Well, I actually replied to him or his dad, I'm not sure who it was, yeah. messaging on one of your videos uh, because we were talking about um, the sun and coming here and like our trip and well, stuff. Yeah. And I actually said that uh, watching his stuff and their kind of um, take on the fact that they moved to Wales, um, that was actually something that Sean and I were going to do. We were going to move to Wales, yeah. And obviously not just their opinion, but that helped us think, OK, well, we're kind of after some of the same things that they're talking about, like having us there every day. And they did the Wales move and then just we realised that it rained just as much, if not more. And although it's beautiful, it wasn't enough, was it? So we kind of cut that step out. Not just because of that, as I say, but that was a really, really great help. This is why it's so important and so amazing. To look at the other people in the community. Yeah, and yeah. people share their stories and openly say like, oh yeah, we did this and this didn't work because then we all learn from each other. So Yeah, and they're a kind of that. an inspirational channel as well because the videography is really good. Yeah. And it's just something about, they've got definitely got their, their way of doing things, which I want to take pieces from because it's yeah. really good. Really great. Well, I'm going to slope off anyway. Right. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. We'll get on. into the topic of the video today. Okay, so why are modern retro bikes all things to all people? Well, as you can see behind me, we've got a large flat seat, which is typical styling of this type of motorcycle. And that allows you a great degree of flexibility in the ergonomics. So these bikes are quite comfortable. So if you're a short armed individual like myself, you can scoot towards the tank and towards the bars. Whereas if you're long limbed like two wheeled Willie, who's six foot four, you can scoot back and then it gives you more room on the motorcycle. You've also got mid controls on the foot pegs. That gives you a comfortable riding position, nice bend in the knee. Don't have that horrible cramped up uh, knee that you get in sporty riding, but you then don't get the very forward cruiser style controls, which are a little bit more off-putting perhaps to newer riders. This is kind of the middle ground, mid controls. It's just really, really comfortable and accessible for many types of rider. Another brilliant aspect to modern retro is the performance envelope varies hugely. You can go all the way up from a J-Series Royal Enfield 350, like the classic 350, Bullet 350, 20 horsepower. That is a bike made for pottering about the place. It is not a fast motorcycle. It's more about the character of the engine, the classic styling, and the experience you get riding. You go all the way up through the Interceptors, the Triumph Bonnevilles, the BSAs, and then at the top of the tree, you've got something like the Kawasaki Z900 RS, I'd say 900cc inline four, over 100 horsepower. That's about you can really ride fast. So the performance uh, variations of modern classics are endless and it gives you a huge, a huge array of choice. 
Another brilliant aspect of modern retro is the affordability. Now these bikes by their nature are stripped back. There's no fairings, there's limited electronic aids, there's no IMUs, there's no cruise control, radar, all that stuff. So it allows the bikes to come in at a lower price point. And arguably a lot of the people who buy these bikes don't want that stuff anyway. If you're looking at the BSA, it's £6,000. Um, Royal Enfield Interceptor, very similar. The Royal Enfield J-Series engines are, or J-Series bikes, they're about 4,000. Moto Guzzi is 7,500 for the V7. So you've got an affordable price point. People can buy these bikes without needing to go down the road of finance, without having monthly repayments. It's just a very easy way to, to buy a new motorcycle and get into the, the sport of motorcycling. Another attractive feature of these bikes is the overall design. So you've got the use of materials like metal, chrome, leather, kind of historically relevant materials, but you've also got key design elements that just seem to be timeless. Like you've got spoked wheels, a low slung exhaust, you've got twin shock absorbers and springs at the back. You also have a fin stack on the engine, so you've got quite, you've got an ode to air cooled design of yesteryear large round headlights, usually analog controls here, and you've got a upswept bar, so you don't usually have clip-ons on this type of motorcycle. And I think the design is, is pretty much timeless because it's based on what was current 50 or 60 years ago. These bikes don't really get reinvented. The design is the design, and <laughs> it's, it's about crafting a classic look that has, appeals to people across generations. So there's a reason why so many people like the new BSAs because it looks and brings back memories of BSAs of old. So I think the design is timeless and that gives it timeless appeal. The other thing to mention is that modern classic bikes seem to have become very, very popular in modern culture like James Bond's riding the Triumph Scrambler 1200 in Italy, also Gal Gadot riding a Royal Enfield Meteor in the latest film. It's, it's just that kind of popular culture that a lot of brands would like to recreate. These bikes are just cool. And because motorcyclists are 1% of the population, if you ride a bike by nature, you're already um, in a small cohort of the entire population. People actually have a motorcycle license. So being exclusive or being unique is cool. Add to that, you've got this classic design and an ode to yesteryear it makes it even cooler again. The final and most important point about the modern classic motorcycle is it really represents an antithesis to today's modern society. So in today's age, you have endless device, endless connectivity, you're plugged in all the time, you're monitored, everything is tracked by cookies and Facebook and social media and WhatsApp. You've got 5G, you've got government overreach, and this takes you back to a time when things were a lot freer, a lot simpler. They weren't all better, look at healthcare and things like that, but in particular, when you ride this bike, you just feel a sense of freedom that perhaps you don't get in day-to-day -day life. It takes you back to a simpler time. There's no electronics or gadgets or gizmos on this type of bike. It feels like a classic bike, and it gives you that experience of being back in time essentially in a kind of golden age of motorcycling. And that is probably the number one thing why people love the style and character and experience that modern retro bikes give you. All right guys, I'm gonna end the video there. Thanks a lot for watching and let me know what you think in the comments. If you agree, if I've missed anything about what makes these bikes so great, please fill it in, yeah, fill in the gaps and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you very much.